Hey, I'm Madison Beer, and I'll be breaking down some of my most iconic music video looks. So this is Baby. This came out in 2020. It was directed by my friend Drew Kirsch, and it was off my album Life Support. I think this was my first ever two-day music video shoot, and I was really excited because I thought that was just very cool. Most of this video was spent in the hair and makeup chair, I would say. Like, the shots didn't take particularly long, but the the changes did. My, my hair was super light here. I dyed my hair blonde for this video. I thought that would be, like, exciting. I don't remember the exact length, but I'm pretty sure those were pushing, like, 30-inch clip-in extensions, and I don't know why. I was just like, I need hair that's down to my knees. I think that the first thing that we did was actually the pigtails, and I was so excited, and I was so into it, and then I was like, I need these off of my head yesterday. I swear they each weighed 20 pounds. Maybe I'm being dramatic, but that's what it felt like. And between shots, someone would have to hold them up for me so they weren't pulling on my head. Chris Faye styled this shoot, and she actually, you'll hear her name a lot because she styled most of my music videos. I've always loved Lily Rose Depp's Met Gala look with the Chanel and the gold chains, and, and that's like one of my favorite outfits ever, and I was really inspired by that. Obviously, this is not Chanel. It's like a pleather dress that I Honestly, don't remember. I think it might have been off, ordered off Amazon. <laughs> but I know we put on some belts. I think I am wearing a Chanel belt. This was a very scary scene for me. Like, I was really nervous to do this. I was nervous to walk on set in a bra and underwear. Like, I've never been that bare on a music video or any type of shoot before, and so I was just nervous. But it was really nice, and everyone was so sweet and supportive, and I actually, like, sat the whole time talking to all those girls, and they were just all amazing, and it, it was nice. I know you go home. This is Home to Another One. Came out in 2023, and it was directed by me and Aaron Moreno, and it's off my new album, Silence Between Songs. I had no idea what I wanted to do for this song, which scared me a little bit, and then I was like, no, okay, let me just think about it in a different way. To me, for some reason, like, home will always remind me of E.T., and it'll always make me think of aliens. So even the title alone, I always had this, like, spacey kind of thing in my head already, and I have another called song called Homesick off of my last album, Life Support, that is a little alien, not on this planet related, whatever. So I thought that it would be kind of cool to tie that in. And I just landed on being an alien. I'm gonna basically be dating an alien who is cheating on his real life with me. And then at the end of the video, you get that reveal of she's been watching the whole time. I don't know where I got this from. I have no idea where it came from. I definitely felt like, you know, inspired by Star Trek. I love the show Maniac because I feel like that is like in the future, but it feels like it's in the past. There's this Black Mirror episode called USS Callister that I think is so aesthetically awesome. Shows like Severance, whatever, like the palette and the tone and all that stuff is to me very like futuristic, but also retro in a lot of ways. And I felt like because I'm an alien that is communicating with another alien, you would assume I'm in the future, but then I wanted my style to sort of be more so, you know, yeah, like you said, 60s mod vintage, whatever. I love the polka dot look the most because it's the least in my comfort zone, I guess. Like, I've never worn super poofy sleeves or anything like that, and I um, didn't even want to try it on, and then I tried it on, and I was like, wait, it's cute, and so I love that one the best. I think it's, I think it's really sweet. The outfit that I'm wearing on the UFO, that was inspired by Barbarella, and I wanted to do something that was like similar, kind of, the essence of that, and so I had that outfit custom made, and it was so uncomfortable. Those are fake bangs, they're clip-on bangs, and they came, they look good. Like, I have to say, they, they look real, but the issue was because we had this shot of like wind blowing and bangs flying, there are some shots that I can show you. They looked so funny in some shots, that they just like fully would flip up. It looked like I was wearing like a toupee or something. I was like, yeah, I want bangs in the first shot. And I want that to be the shot that I get a blast of wind. So have fun with that, everybody. <laughs> the makeup was kind of just like, I wanted to lean mainly into the 60s kind of like cut crease mod eye. I was sort of dreading being put into the VFX makeup at the end of the day because I don't like things on my face and paint all over my body. Honestly, my on-screen boyfriend, his name is Jay Kane, he made the video the easiest day ever. Like, we all discussed and collectively agreed that this video was the easiest video to shoot. It was so fun. It was like everyone was in such a good spirit, and honestly, he was in that makeup all day. He was in that for 12 hours, and he was just such a trooper, and he was like laughing, and he would just kind of like bobble his head, and his little antennas would move and make everyone laugh. Like, it, he was just great, so I ended up not being as afraid because I was like, we'll be in this together, and it'll be fun. The only issue was that we had about 20 minutes left until we had to literally camera wrap. There was no going over time, like it was not happening. So I had 20 minutes to get into this look and shoot the shot, which is literally impossible. 
But shout out to the VFX makeup artists because they pulled it off somehow. Within like seven minutes, I was completely transformed, ran down to set, and we shot it. Each day goes by and each night I cry. My favorite video, Reckless. This came out in 2021. It was directed by me and Amber Park, and it is on my album, Silence Between Songs. I honestly can't explain the creative vision because this just was something that I saw literally in a dream. The driving force was the book, was I was like, I need a real life gigantic book because the beginning of the song is like, this is a story I hate. So that was the beginning, that was like the main creative was the storyline. This was, I would say, the first real video that I had a hand in directing in a serious way. It was also this video I remember vividly sitting down with Amber Park, who is my creative dir director. And I was like, I want this blonde wig that's blonde at the top and then it's black at the bottom. The reason that we did the wig like that was because it matches the dress. The dress goes from like blonde to black. And I was like, I want my hair to do the same. So we shot all of it on a blue screen. The book part was on a green screen. Yeah, it was on a huge set, but the book is real. The book is fully real, which was crazy. So they actually also, the, the book literally says all the lyrics, which is so cool. But yeah, everything else is obviously VFX and it was, it's just, it's just so amazing to me. I mean, even that sh shot of the paper mache town coming out of nowhere and then like falling. Like I had that idea and I was like, yeah, but I don't know if it's gonna come out how I really want it to. And I really have a specific vision. I want all the buildings to have the lyrics on them. And then I want the floor of the book to open up. And it just came out exactly how I wanted it to. And that was so incredibly rewarding. Very last shot of this video is me in the water. Where is the water? I don't know. It was supposed to be in a water tank on the set of the video. We had it heating all day. It was gonna be nice and warm for me, whatever. I was walking to set and I get told that it exploded in the parking lot and the water tank is now gone and um, everyone's equipment is ruined and there's this whole, there's literally chaos, like there's anarchy in the streets. I was like, oh cool, okay great. So how do we get the shot now? There was like basically zero to no options and I was like, I have a pool at my house, is that, would that work? And they were like, no. And then they were like, maybe yes. And we all literally hauled ass to my house and we, lined my pool with like black garbage bags. This shot is literally in my pool at three in the morning. We're like five hours over time. Everyone is so tired. And literally at the end of the shoot, most people ended up getting in the jacuzzi with me. And it was great. The shot with the pages at the end too, I, I love, but there was only like 10 real pages and they made it look like there was hundreds. Very cool. Everything's a lie, nothing is real. I want you to change it. This is selfish. This was released in 2020 and it was directed by me and Jason Lester and it was on my album Life Support. We did a few album photo shoots and I felt disconnected and I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. And then I had this vision of like, yeah, like something that was kind of like cut up, I guess. And so this was compounded with the music video. I was like, we have to get the album artwork today, ideally. And it was from that first opening shot. It was literally just one of the moments where I sat up. Now, every time this video starts, I get emotional because I'm just like, this was such a time for me. And I had no idea when I was shooting it, that this would be such a pivotal moment in my career. This whole video was actually, it doesn't seem like it, but it was based off of the scene in Alice in Wonderland where she cries and it fills the room with tears. And I was so inspired by that. And then we were told like, we don't have the money to shrink you and make you small and swim in your tears. So we ended up like rejigging the budget and making this happen. When I cried, the rain was triggered. So I knew that I was gonna have to cry this day. So I mentally, well, I prepared in writing the song and like going through what I had to go through to write it. But I was like, I need to get to a place where I can kind of make myself cry. So I was able to make myself cry, but there's also this amazing thing called a tear stick. And it's basically vapor rub and you just like put it under your eyes and your eyes start to water. So it was a combination of both of those things. Honestly, I only had like, Aquaphor or something shiny on my lips here. I didn't have any color on them. This was the color that we put on the video. I ended up making my lips look super pink. That's not how it looked before we colored the video. I was wearing like little to no makeup here. I kind of only really had like some shadow underneath to give my eyes kind of that crying kind of look or whatever. But we didn't do mascara because we knew that it was going to rain down hard. The hardest part was the hair though, because it was like, if we don't get this in one take, we're gonna have to spend an hour drying these again, like 24 inch long extensions and it's gonna be a whole thing. And these ones were also real extensions, so I couldn't just clip them out. And I started directing my music videos like a while ago because I was just like, I feel like I'm coming up with these ideas and then someone else is directing them and then that's kind of where things like don't meet perfectly because obviously they don't have my brain and I don't have theirs. I was like, let's it's probably gonna be a challenge but I felt like I could do it and I felt like they would just come out so much more 
accurately how I wanted them to versus like giving someone full, you know, directing control. But it really has become such like a collaborative effort and it's so much fun. I don't speak boy You're always coming back with your love sport. This is boy shit. This was released in 2021. It was directed by Lauren Dunn and it's off my album Life Support. So I'm pretty positive that the beginning shot is quite literally a template off the internet and I think it is somewhere in Italy and then we shot this in LA. I think in Pasadena. <laughs> so we're just again lying to you all the time. Everything's a lie. I just was thinking like European summer, like just like something ladylike. Yeah, I was like, I just wanna look like a little lady. I kept saying that, like I just want to be like a little lady. And I think that's what we accomplished. These two outfits are arguably my most important pivotal ones because they both inspired my tour outfit. I do love the curtain bangs. This hairstyle ended up becoming a hairstyle I did all the time. I loved like the pulled back, whatever. There's not a real full storyline, I think, to this video, which I think is interesting and really cool, other than obviously there's like a boy who's bothering me, as always. I think the Heather's thing sort of comes in with like the ominous like girl group that I have, and there's like weird sort of cuts of them like eating fruit or just like being, like, I don't know. We just, we just wanted this to feel kind of like, what, what, are, what am I watching? But also I kind of am liking it. I will give Lauren Dunn the credit on this one. She came up with most of these things and I just was like, I trust you, let's do it. Why can I see you know it can be this easy to So this is Dangerous, it came out in 2022. It was directed by me and Mutant and it's off my album Sounds Between Songs. This video was definitely inspired by the music. The music is the most important part of this song and the song is very real to me and about something just like super serious to me. So I kind of avoid this song a little bit in this video because it's, it's very emotional. Shooting it was very emotional. It was hard to keep it together all day. It was also hard to get on that stand that I'm standing on. Like that platform in that dress was not easy to get up on. I really wanted the music to be highlighted the most because that's what to me the most important part of this song is and the story of it. I didn't, I didn't, I also couldn't act out the story. It was like too personal, too much for me. So I opted for this. I didn't know what I wanted to be in. I thought that I originally wanted to be in white just to have it really pop. And then I saw this dress and I was like, I think this is perfect for some reason. It made me feel like a princess for sure. I remember we did have a very shimmery eye for this video. We kind of wanted to have this like coppery shimmery eye moment for it. And I was also, wearing a good amount of makeup. I was wearing a lot of foundation, so we wanted it to just look very, I wanted to feel like I was gonna perform at a serious like recital or something, and I was actually singing this, and this is how I assumed I would dress and wear my makeup. It was incredibly cool to shoot with a full orchestra, and they were really playing the song, and it was so hard to keep it together. It was just so beautiful, it sounded so amazing. I mean, we have a harp, It's it just was, it was just crazy, and it was so emotional for me, and these people were so talented and so amazing. And also sweet, we had such a fun day. Yeah, it was a really pleasant shoot. I got to just listen to an orchestral version of my song all day. The moment at the end of the video where I'm sitting by myself and all the lights turn off on me is just representative of kind of how I feel in general sometimes, also how that song feels to me. And um, I felt like it was important because even if I did have a performance, you know, per se, I feel like I would still end up feeling alone, I guess. But yeah, I, I felt like it was important. I really wanted this this moment. The world has so this is Spinning. This was released in 2023 and it was directed by myself and Aaron Moreno and it's on my album Silence Between Songs. This video is, I think, my favorite one I've ever released. It just feels very representative of this kind of new era, new version of myself and um, just growing and evolving in so many ways. It's also representative of things that I feel like I went through to make this album and feeling kind of alone and and whatnot. I knew I wanted this video to feel like a short film. That was very clear in my head. I was like, I want this to feel kind of like a mini movie in some way. So we shot this at a really awesome location in Pomona and it's kind of this abandoned, now used to rent out as a space. Like it was, I think it was like a hospital treatment center of some sort. And it was, the houses was where I was told like nurses and doctors lived. And then there's like a scene where I'm banging on the door of the library. And that was like a real place that people used. And it was just, it was crazy. It was basically, we had a whole little mini town to ourselves. And I was very, very stern on a cornfield. I was like, I, I need a cornfield. And they had a cornfield on this set, literally in the town. They just coincidentally happened to have a humongous cornfield and I was like this was meant to be. That's my puppy, that's Presley. That's my baby. He, all my fans all the time were like, please, Presley, can he please make a debut in a video? And I'm like, 
Sure, and so he was on set with us. He was being a very good boy, as always. So Aaron and I, when we sat down to create this video, we were, she was like, I really want you to feel confident like wearing nothing, because you know, every time she comes to my house and we're like doing the treatments and whatnot, I am wearing nothing. And she's like, I feel like this video was really calling for that. And I was like, oh my goodness, okay, so. We did, we ended up literally doing nothing except for, like I said, kind of was selfish. We did like the red kind of under eye sort of thing and whatever, but it was very, very minimal. I don't even think I was wearing concealer of any kind on this day. It can be intimidating to make a music video that you you know, hope will get a ton of views and have no makeup on, obviously, especially in this day and age. But I was like, you know what? No, you're right. This is, this is an important artistic choice. You know, there's like a very specific shot in this video, like this Kubrick shot from The Shining and it's like underneath and I'm banging on the door and that's not like the most flattering angle, but I was like, we're doing it. That shot is really cool. And I was just trying to like let go. And I think even that in itself was very representative of the album to me, it's just like, learning more about myself internally and caring a lot less about the other stuff. And this video is like kind of representative of that. Amelia Kring styled me for this, who she's amazing and I love her style so much. And we just knew we wanted it to feel like it wasn't styled, but like, you know, whatever. We had, we did have a mood board, even though I'm just wearing like socks and a t-shirt and pajamas underneath it. We did have a mood board and this, all of it was intentional. So I actually released a teaser with the clock in it and it said the release date of the song. And then I kind of surprised my fans with a change that when they watched the video, it was changed to the release of the album date. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we were discussing like, what, what do we want the clock to say? And I was like, I feel like the only date that makes sense is September 15th. So that's what we decided to do. It's the day the world stops spinning. Thank you so much, Allure. I hope you guys enjoyed me breaking down my favorite music videos and I can't wait to do it again with you soon.